I do hope that wasn't for me. <laughs> but that is... Pitches, ain't you? Every day we we have, of course, a little bit extra of concerning news. Anti-elite sentiment may lead to Brexit, warns PM's best friend. Now you might be saying, hey wait, what is Brexit? Well... Allow me to simplify it for you. Brexit is the new Grexit, bitches. What does that mean? It means that right on cue, Britain is threatening to leave the European Union. And along with it, the Euro. That wonderful currency of peace asterisk that was instituted in 1999 making all of europe share the same fiat currency and from then the problems began and now we've had a euro crisis almost Yearly. Remember Greece the last three years? People are getting tired of Greece, so they had to throw in a new name. So right on cue, Britain is threatening to leave the EU and the Euro just long enough to destabilize markets, allowing fat cats to scoop up more middle class 401k dough and raid pension funds while creating the instability. You might be asking yourself, how long must we wait for this contrived Bukaki Kabuki theater to play out? Well, the middle of the summer, buddy. That's how long. What is going to happen? They're going to take a vote. Britain's going to take a vote on whether or not to leave the European Union. So what's going to happen? I would say there's a 99% chance it's going to be the same old shit. The rigged vote will look close and people will be wringing their hands 
and many money pundits will be betting one way or another. And people will be scared and stocks will go up and down. But I'm saying there's a 99% chance Britain's gonna stay in the EU. But please remember the 1% caveat though. The markets will crash the exact moment the mammon masters want it to. No sooner and no later. So unless you have super secret Iron Bank 13 info, I wouldn't bet on a Brexit, bitches. And remember, bitches is a zero hedge financial term of endearment, yo. So when I call you guys bitches, that means I like you. And P.S. You guys smell like socks and comfy pants. So I don't know. Maybe shower, change your socks, put your big girl panties on, and adorn your big boy pants if you can. Because I'm going to read this article. All right. Now that I've educated everybody it's april 2nd david cameron's so-called best friend in european politics has warned warned the prime minister that he has made a potentially catastrophic miscalculation by calling an eu referendum that could spark the disintegration of Europe as we know it. And, um, I think we all know. Behind every president or prime minister, there's an iron banker telling them what the hell to do. Frederick Reinfeldt, the former prime minister of Sweden, who spoke at the Conservative Party conference in 2006, told the Telegraph that he fears his old friend is in danger of losing the EU referendum on June 23rd because of the rising anti-establishment sentiment in Europe. See, now, here's what they're going to do. They're going to push it. Be like, oh yeah, Britain's probably going to leave. And that's probably going to cause the euro to slowly collapse like dominoes. And so you'll hear a lot of people talking about Britain leaving. You might even hear the vote close and in favor of leaving. But my gut says it's not going to leave. Just like Greece didn't leave and Greece didn't leave again and then Greece didn't leave again, you know? Bailout City. They gotta cause some type of turbulence in the market. Mr. Reinfeldt, a center-right modernizer who regularly exchanges text messages with Cameron, said his own experience of being dumped out of office in 2014, despite being dubbed the rock star of recovery, had taught him how fickle electorates can be. It becomes an emotional vote. People think, I will vote against the elite. If this is what they think we should do, I will do the opposite. We saw that definitely in Sweden, we got an anti-elite vote in our referendum, and Britain stands a risk of that too. He recalled how losing Sweden's 2003 Euro referendum had taught him that anti-Brussels sentiment was easily capable of trumping hard-headed argument. 
We saw that definitely in Sweden. We got an anti-elite vote in our referendum. And Britain stands a risk of that too. I've learned that a referendum can go either way. Yeah, really, man? Uh, you know, votes can go either way? Okay, great. Genius. And that can easily become a discussion of other things from what you have asked the people about that other emotions will come in. Wait, you mean people are sick of the super uber rich running the show? I understand. I understand. I'm just like, I wonder what their end game plan is. Cause you think you'd want an end game plan where Things get better for everybody. Nowadays, it just seems like everything is getting worse for everybody. I mean, the rich may be getting richer, but if the overall quality of life for everybody's going down and everybody's all miserable and unhappy and angry, and they may have more money, but I doubt they have more enjoyment out of life. In office, Mr. Cameron and Mr. Reinfeldt were so close political allies with the Prime Minister openly admiring the so-called Nordic model of economy that blends comprehensive welfare provision with an emphasis on social mobility and the individual. However, Mr. Cameron's much criticized EU renegotiation deal made little impact on voters. Okay, I'm pretty sure that if Britain leaves, those voices which want to deepen integration will be stronger. So you might end up outside of the European Union that goes in a direction you do not like, but which you are still dependent on. He dismissed as fantasies many of the out campaign's promises that a Brexit would save money, boost business, and reclaim British sovereignty, but acknowledged that those arguments were hitting home with voters. A lot of the things which are written and said in Britain are plainly fantasies. And I'm saying this as a friend of Britain, he said, adding that the pro leave promises that the UK would swiftly be able to negotiate a new deal with Brussels or wildly optimistic. Man, he needs to work on his photograph face. Seems kind of weird to me. Both those chaps do. I'm very surprised to hear so many on the outside say that this is going to be easy and that it's going to be quite quick. That's what she said. Instead, he warned, Britain's departure would be a very big breakout when it comes to legislation and economic links and ties, bringing great uncertainty for quite some time. Unlike the markets now, which have been dependent upon bailouts monthly, daily, Yearly, there's a lot of uncertainty in the rock solid EU thingy, considering like half the EU's on bailouts now. Printing presses have been on overload. Now, granted, they just print digitally with like their blackberries, but whatever. And if I know anything about financial markets, the one thing that they dislike is uncertainty. 
Whatever, man. There will be a rebalancing, he predicted. There are very few big net contributors to the budget. And there's a balancing act when it comes to do we believe in more open markets, more trade, and do we believe in more in top-down controlling of the economy? Anyway, I think, like I said, the Iron Bank is running the show. The global central banks know what's going on, and they're calling the shot. So we'll just have to wait and see, but I would not bet on a Brexit. I would bet against it, but I could be wrong. We shall see. All right. Peace out. God bless everyone. Yay, economics is so wonderful. Well, we're back in business, boys and girls, just like the old days. 